Hello everyone. Good evening. In this particular video, we will be trying to learn about substitution reaction in octahedral complex and its reaction mechanism. So, first let us try to understand what a substitution reaction means. Substitution reaction involves the replacement of one ligand by another. That is what we mean by substitution. This is called nucleophilic substitution, designated as S subscript N, since ligand are all nucleophiles. Since in coordination complexes, it is the ligand which replaces another ligand and ligands are nucleophiles. So, instead of just calling it substitution reaction, we call it nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, over there, one general reaction is shown in which a octahedral complex having 6 monodented ligand, 5 of which is A and one of them is X. So, it is MA5X which reacts with or which gets substituted, one of the ligand gets substituted by Y, that is X. So Y substitute X and gives you MA5Y and plus X. So the ligand X is getting replaced by Y. Now, there are several mechanisms by which this reaction occurs. But we shall consider only two main types of mechanism. The most common mechanisms. And they are unimolecular nucleophilic substitution, which is very commonly known as SN1, or also known as dissociative SN1 mechanism. And the other is bimolecular nucleophilic substitution, commonly known as SN2, or associative SN2 mechanism. So let us try to understand one by one this two mechanism in detail. So let us start with unimolecular nucleophilic substitution SN1 or dissociative SN1 mechanism. According to this mechanism, the complex first undergoes dissociation losing the ligand to be replaced. So you can see in the first step, it is clear that MA5X dissociate to a 5-coordinated species, octahedral is a 6-coordinated species, since one of the ligands get dissociated, so it converts into 5-coordinated species, which is usually a square pyramidal intermediate complex. And the intermediate which is formed the square pyramidal intermediate complex which is formed then reacts readily with the incoming ligand that is Y to give you a new complex that is MA5Y. Now as we can see in the two step, the first step is a slow step and the second step is a fast step. And from our knowledge of chemical kinetics, we know that the rate of a reaction is determined by the slow step, not by the fast step. So if we try to determine the rate of this particular reaction, the rate equation can be written as rate equal to K, which is rate constant, into the concentration of the reactant, that is MA5X. So since the rate is dependent on only one concentration term, that's why we call it SN1 or unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. And why it is called dissociative SN1 mechanism? Because if you can see in the first step, the reaction start with dissociation of the complex. Since the reaction starts with dissociation of the complex, that's why the reaction is named as dissociative SN1 mechanism. These are the two possible 
intermediates which can form in unimolecular nucleophilic substitution mechanism. In the first, you can see it's a six coordinated, six coordination number octahedral complex in which x slowly removes, okay, x goes out of the system and gives you a square pyramidal intermediate as I have told you in the previous section. And then the y substitute in its place which is a fast step and gives you a new complex. There is another type in, of SN1 mechanism where the complex which is shown in the second diagram, the complex again it is the same complex, the complex loses x and try to understand in this particular mechanism when the bond between x and m dissociate the remaining m a5 m and a5 species the five coordinated species immediately adjust the bond angle like in the previous case you can see in the square pyramidal there is no adjustment of the bond angle you get a square pyramidal complex but if it happens that if it goes through this mechanism then the bond start arranging itself and the bond angle adjusts in such a way that it will give you a trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. Now to get trigonal bipyramidal intermediate if you see the figure the second figure the ligand the A ligands are numbered A1, A2, A5, A6 and A4 you can see there clearly. So in this ligand what is happening is if you see the change of the angle the change of A2 4 A2 M and A4 if you see it is in 180 degree which you can see in the trigonal bipyramidal geometry from 180 in the reactant or in the complex to trigonal bipyramidal complex it changes from A to M you can clearly see it changes to 120 degree. Again in the reactant the complex A to M A4 the angle you can clearly see that the angle is 180 in the trigonal bipyramidal intermediate it goes to A to M A4 which is 120. So the bond angle adjust or the bond adjust in such a way that it goes for trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. And finally that particular intermediate is attacked by Y and the attack can place actually take place through three position either it can be from that angle A to M A4 or it can be A to M A5 or it can be A4 M A5. So to, through this three angles the Y can attack and finally give you again an octahedral complex. Now the question is which of the two mechanisms should we propose? Now we can clearly see from the mechanism that this in the second mechanism where we have trigonal bipyramidal intermediate there involves the movement of at least two metal ligand bonds where there is no such movement required in case of square panel intermediate. So as a result the SN1 reaction proceed normally through more stable square planar intermediate not through trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. But that does not mean trigonal bipyramidal intermediate does not form. There are cases where if a trigonal bipyramidal complex intermediate is stabilized by pi bonding then it prefers to go through trigonal bipyramidal intermediate. But in most of the cases, it goes through square pyramidal intermediate. So that is about SN1 or dissociative mechanism. Let us try to see the other mechanism that is bimolecular nucleophilic substitution SN2 or associative SN2 mechanism. Now in such case 
what happens is according to this mechanism the new ligand first adds in contrary to what we have done in SN1 first it dissociate in this case it first associates that's why we call it an associative SN2 mechanism so the incoming ligand first associate with the complex there is no dissociation in the first step and forms a seven coordinated species that seven coordinated species then in this next step which is a fast step dissociates one of its ligand X and gives you a new octahedral complex now in this case you can clearly see again through our knowledge of chemical kinetics the first step is a slow step and the second step is a fast step and if you see the slow step in that slow step you have two reactant so if you write the rate expression rate will be equal to k m a 5 x and multiplied with the concentration of y since we have two concentration term hence we call it a second order reaction or a bimolecular reaction that's why we call it SN2. Now let us try to see what type of structural changes takes place when such reaction takes place. So as we have done in SN1 reaction, there are also two possibilities in SN2 mechanism. In the first case, you can see that the ligand Y first approaches towards the complex and binds with the metal and forms a seven coordinated complex that is pentagonal bipyramidal intermediate that pentagonal bipyramidal intermediate then loses x and again forms a octahedral complex so the intermediate is trigon pentagonal bipyramidal now in the second one if you try to see it's an octahedral complex and the intermediate is formed if the nucleophile Y attacks through the middle of one of the triangular face of octahedral. So it is attacking one of the through the middle of one of the octahedral uh, triangular face of the octahedron as soon as the Y start approaching M the outgoing ligand X start moving towards the middle of another triangular face so that the octahedral wedge intermediate formed has both X and Y in the equivalent position which you can see in the octahedral wedge intermediate where the X and Y are in equivalent position. The formation of octahedral wedge intermediate after the formation of octahedral wedge intermediate the complex moves to again an octahedral complex so that is how the reaction takes place now out of this two ways which way will be a better mechanism for SN2 process or SN2 reaction. If you try to see the first case in the trigonal bipyramidal, in the formation of trigonal bipyramidal, sorry, pentagonal bipyramidal intermediate, it requires at least movement of four ligands from the complex to pentagonal bipyramidal at least four ligand has to adjust itself to form that particular intermediate whereas no such adjustment or no such movement we can find in octahedral wedge intermediate so the favorable mechanism will be the octahedral wedge intermediate through octahedral wedge intermediate mechanism so that is how the nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place in octahedral complexes Thank you everyone, see you in the next class.